Good afternoon. Hope you had a great Shabbos and a good beginning to your week. So this week's Torah portion is Parshat Ki Tavo, where we read about the obligation to bring Bikurim, which was the first of the fruit crop, to Jerusalem. And they would give a prayer of gratitude to the Almighty, thanking Hashem for all the blessings in their lives. Of course, we know that gratitude is such an important part of Judaism. Our names are called Yehudi, which means to give gratitude, because the essence of being Jewish is to give gratitude. But in today's portion that we read, he speaks about the prayer that we would give when we would be tithing. And we would come to Jerusalem, and they would say, God, I came to Jerusalem, and I did everything you told me. I did exactly as God told me. I didn't transgress any of your commandments, and neither did I forget. That's the obligation of the person who brings the Bikurim and the Miser to say as he comes to Jerusalem. And he has to say verbally. And the question, of course, is, I don't understand. You get up there and say, I'm great, I did everything right, I'm amazing. Who needs that? There's the gratitude part. You say, thank you to God. But why did he specifically have to speak about following all the rules and doing things right? And the Lubav Rebbe tells us something very beautiful. And it's especially applicable to this time as we get ready for the high holidays and we get ready to come before God and coronate Him as the King and then ask Him for forgiveness. It's easy to bash yourself. And it's easy to knock yourself. And it's easy to say, I'm not worth anything. I did nothing well. I did nothing good. How am I going to get a good year? What's going to be with me? But in order for us to succeed, in order for us to impact the world and to accomplish that which God wants, which is tikkun olam, to make the world a better place, we need to have self-worth. We need to speak about the good things we did. We need to verbalize all the amazing things about our character, about who we are, and say, this is who I am, this is what I accomplished. You know, one of the greatest crises we have in society, as we've spoken before, is the self-worth of our youth, that they don't feel that there's any value to them. And there's anything important to what they could contribute to the world. Tells us the Torah in this week's Torah portion that when a Jew came to Jerusalem and they had to give the Bikur and the gratitude and the tithing, they got up there and he said, God, I did exactly how you said, verbatim. I fulfilled all the obligations. I did all the commandments. I didn't forget any. I'm a person who keeps my word, who tries his best, who has so many talents. Yes, of course, Yom Kippur will come. Hashanah will come, we'll coronate God, and Kippur will ask for forgiveness for our imperfections. But before we could ask for forgiveness for our imperfections, before we could feel bad for that which we haven't done, we have to recognize the value of who we are and what we have done. And only then will we be able to actually complete the mission that God has given us and to really fulfill our mission in this world. It's something to remember and to teach our kids the self-worth and value of who they are. You know, interesting story. Elul is a time when the king is in the field, as we say in Judaism. God finds himself among his people. He's more accessible. It's not the king in the palace behind all the fences, but God is local and available, so to speak. Although he's always local, he's more accessible in the month of Elul. And the truth is, it's in two weeks from today, we'll be at Rosh Hashanah praying and celebrating a new year. And everyone's focused on the king now, King Charles III and the queen, Queen Elizabeth. But there's a remarkable story. A Holocaust survivor who was on the kinder transport with another thousand children. And just lately he was retold by the chief rabbi of the Eidah HaKharedis in Jerusalem who passed away this year. And he always used it as a metaphor, but it's a true story. And the chief rabbi said how he grew up in a little, little shtetl, four hours from Prezburg. Four hours from Prezburg. And the winds of the Holocaust, the World War II were blowing, and the people didn't believe if what they heard was true. They wanted to send a messenger to the main city, to Prezburg, to find out what's going on. And they figured, who would they send that could arouse the least suspicion? So they send this little boy, 
who later became the chief rabbi of Ada Haredes. He was 12 years old. He came to Presburg and he gave the message over from his community. And the leaders of the community were very impressed with this boy. And they said, listen, go back and tell your community that not only is what they say is true, but it's much, much worse. And whoever could should flee Germany, should flee Europe to be able to leave what's coming the Jewish people's way. But then he looked at this kid, this 12-year-old kid. He says, you know, from England, they send us now an offer to take a thousand children in the kinder transport and to bring them to London to save them from the Holocaust. And one of the hardest challenges we have is who should we send? But you made such an impression. Here's a ticket, come back in a month or whatever it was, the train will be going. And please, you'll be able to go to London. The kid went back, he told everyone in his town what was going on and he told his parents his intention to go. His parents bid farewell to him and they were crying. His film wasn't even ready. He was about to become bar mitzvah and he went on the kinder transport. He comes to London. A few months later, he gets the feeling from his parents. That was the last he heard from his parents who were killed by the Nazis. But one day, these, there, there are these orphans, these young kids in, whole, in orphanages without their parents. And they hear that King George VI is going to be passing through the town as he did many times before the war, during the war. And they line them up all to come and, and greet him and to say thank you for all that he's done. There was this little kid, Shlomo, who later told us over on BBC, who cried every day uncontrollably. He was missing his mother and father. But then the day that he heard this, he suddenly stopped crying. And the people that took care of him in the orphanage were so happy, but little did they know that he had a plan. They came and they were behind barricades, waiting for the beautiful carriage of King George to pass and to wave. And as it came to be, he jumped over the barricade, this little young boy, and he ran and dashed towards King George. Of course, he was stopped by security and there was a whole commotion. But King George turned to his security and said, what's going on here? And they told him about this kid. And he said, bring the kid to me. And the kid came to King George and King George says, what did you want from me? And the kid starts sobbing. He says, I'm so grateful that I was able to come here and be saved from the war, but I'm without my parents. I can't be without my parents. I can't control it. I need to get my parents from Germany. Please, can you help me? And King George looks at him and says, but my boy, we're at war with Germany. There's no way I can help you. And the kid looks at the king as he recounted later on BBC, and he cries out to the king, but you do whatever you want. And that was the end of it. A month later, he's in the orphanage, and there's a knock on the door. His parents show up. His parents were brought from Germany and reunited with him and merited to live to see him and grandchildren and great grandchildren. And the chief rabbi, Eda Haredes, who was the boy who originally was sent, always said, That's what it means the king is in the field. Elul is our time when we're so close to God, when we could ask for whatever we want, because after all, God's the king and he could accomplish and succeed in giving us all that we want. So, my friend, Two weeks from today's Rosh Hashanah. Let's get into the spirit. Let's focus inward on finding our strength and our identity of who we are and the good things we have and plead to God for a year of health, of happiness for us, for our family, for our community, for the whole world. No more war, no more hate. Blessings and happiness for all. May it be a Shana Tovah, Matukah, sweet and good. Indeed.